Just Outdoors is brought to you by the following community supporters. Jervalin Hardware Hank, Deer River. Jervalin Hardware offers a broad selection of paints and sporting goods and a complete line of plumbing and electrical supplies. Jervalin Hardware, 108 Main Avenue, Deer River. Hi, my name is Tom Chapin and welcome to Just Outdoors. This is a program to bring you the bare facts about the woods, waters, and wildlife of Itasca County. And today we have a special guest, Ben Kellen. Ben, welcome to the show. Thanks, Tom. And Ben, you're the owner, operator, everything of Ben's Bait in Grand Rapids here. 16 years now. 16 years yeah. you've been going. Yeah. Wow. It's That's been a, a while. long time. And you've learned a lot, I hope. I'm learning every day. You're learning every day. You bet. Things are changing. Every, I mean, every week you learn something <laughs> new and something you have to have. Or, yeah, yeah, you wonder how bait can change, but we're talking artificial bait here too, not right. just live bait. But today we're going to be talking about uh, live bait. You're going to give some demonstrations on hooking and you know what the best bait is to use for different seasons. We're going to talk about that. And then some artificial bait too, jigs and so on. Right. Uh, you know, if anybody's got the uh, information, you probably do because this is your livelihood and you have to know the facts uh, before you can present them to your customers. Yeah, and they're, they're asking for, have you ever had anybody come in without a question? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's every day and, and on the other yeah. end of that is you have the salesman coming in trying to get you to stock the new things so yes. you, you learn about them before a lot, a lot of times other people have heard about them. Well, you showed me a couple hooks earlier that uh, I didn't even know existed. I mean, to, to make things turn in the water and all this stuff. We're going to go over a lot of that. You brought a lot of the demo in. So um, let's start out. I'd like to talk about uh, the guest uh, himself and, and where you were raised. And uh, you're a Grand Rapids boy. Yep, correct? I wasn't born here, but raised my whole life. Raised here. your whole life yeah. here. Uh, you went to school here. Yes. And uh, so, uh, how long have you been around Grand Rapids? I've been in town since, uh, as long as I can remember. I went to uh, kindergarten in town and <laughs> and uh, I born and raised, I always say, but I really was right. born in Elbow Lake, Minnesota. Yeah, well, we just put that on the, <laughs> right. on the side. My dad burner. was a teacher and he had to move yes. around a little bit. Yes, so. he was a teacher and uh, he's quite quite the character too. You know, yes. that's probably been handed down a little bit of that. That's where know, the fishing yeah. urge came that's, from. That's right. So how did you get into this business? I mean, come on. Uh, well, really, you just I, say I wanted to be a bait dealer when you were in kindergarten? Or? I, you know, I, I went to college and uh, I lost my job when I was in my late 20s and came home and didn't want to leave again and uh, a bait store came up for sale and and just wow. decided to get in interesting so you just decided that you were going to stay in the north woods no matter what that was I it mean, that was, was it, it. i bought a job so i could too many here. things around here to interest to be interested in right especially with the outdoors right. well there's a lot of folks like that i think they could probably have move on to other jobs somewhere but yet this itasca county area you, you know with a thousand lakes i mean it you can't just get it never out of your ends, blood. Yeah, you yeah. can't get it out of your blood. No, you can't. And uh, I just talked to you uh, last night. You were fishing on Bowstring Lake, so everybody yep. knows where Bowstring Lake is. And uh, we're going to be talking about some of the lakes here and some of the differences in the lakes and different seasons and so on. Um, okay, let's talk about initially uh, bait itself. Now, live bait. Uh, you have people to s that supply you with bait. I think a lot of folks don't know where your bait 
comes from, where, where the origin of your bait is. And I'm talking minnows, crawlers, leeches, and so on. Could you describe some of that? Sure. Um, a lot of the bait, uh, the bait that we have year round, like your basic fathead chubs, uh, sucker minnows, those things come, are, are mostly farmed now. And that's why they're available year round. Trapping bait in the wild in the winter is tough. To no, you're talking ones. fathead minnows, we're talking yep. like a crappie minnow. Crappies, okay. and exactly. Yep. Okay, and then suckers for northerns, or, and right. the bigger suckers for uh, using for decoys, too, right. in the winter, right? Yep. Okay. And so and, that doesn't come locally, that's... No, and, and same, and golden shiners are getting more and more that way. Now, we have a lot of great local golden shiner trappers, but again, in the winter, they kind of downscale and they can't keep up with demand. So okay. then they get, they get the aqua farming kicks in. And aqua farming where? Uh, most of it's in central Minnesota. Oh. Um, Brainerd down to St. Cloud area. There's a lot of uh, hatcheries, we call them, and, and again, most of it's suckers. Suckers is the big deal. Uh, they're the sure. easiest to grow. Um, the DNR is the most liberal with allowing that because they're in every lake and river in, the, in yeah. Minnesota. So. They last a long time, too, don't they're they? Tough, yeah. They're tough, yeah. They're really okay. tough. So uh, anyway, it's, it's a Minnesota thing. I mean, uh, the, most of your minnows are coming from Minnesota. Yeah, absolutely, and, and right now they have to. There is no importation of minnows. Right, So, right. And, and we've heard about the shiner shortage, and, and that really has to do more with winter. Now, now that the silver shiners are, are trappable in Minnesota, the spot tail silver shiner, that's what everybody wants. Nobody. And today we have a special minnow right now. Okay, you know? we're going to go into that. You're going to show some demonstrations uh, later. But uh, you know, I, I really don't know the difference between a golden and a silver shiner as far as is one better than another for fishing. Well, it, <laughs> in in our lakes, most of the lakes that are our most popular lakes, let's say the big basin lakes, Winnie, Leech, Bowstring, Round, they all have a really strong population of spot tail shiners. When they come in to spawn in this mid 50s, 60 degree water, that's what the walleyes are eating. Is that a silver shiner? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's, that's the most common silver shiner in our waters. There is a shiner called the common shiner. It's more of a river minnow. Looks more okay. of a chub. And So you want to produce uh, a bait that is natural to that lake. Exactly. And, and, and that's the best thing you can do. They are keyed in on that particular minnow for yeah. a few weeks in the spring. Okay. So that's the minnow you want. Okay. Now come summer, there's yeah, different we'll options. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, now we, we've, we, we see the origin of your minnows. How about uh, crawlers and leeches? The crawlers all come out of Canada. Um, now that I didn't know. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> it's, it's kind of a joke at the bait store. You know, when you bring crawlers into Canada, you can't bring the dirt. Yes. You have to have them in bedding. But all this dirt is coming out of Canada. So I, I keep saying Canada's going down going and we're going up. So we don't have any regulations as far as in, in the United States is regulating the dirt coming in from Canada. We evidently don't care we about Don't care about that. Yeah. But the Canadians care a lot about bringing dirt, pests or whatever maybe in that dirt into Canada. Right. And, and crawlers themselves, right? Right. You, can you take crawlers into Canada? You can, but they have to be in bedding. They have to be in bedding, not No dirt. more leeches. Leeches they don't allow. No leeches water. at all. So you've got to buy them up there. Yes. Interesting. So, uh, I bet you those questions are asked you daily all the time. On, on that yeah, thing, because all the time. A, a lot of folks coming through Grand Rapids are inevitably going to Canada fishing. I okay? see it, see a lot of it. You bet. I, you bet. Um, up they, they come out anywhere out of Chicago, Wisconsin. They drive yeah. through here to get there. A lot of them do. Yeah, and it is, and, and they pick up bait and tackle and things that you're and, and information right at, at your place too. Right. So, okay. Well. Uh, Interesting on the crawlers, I didn't know that. So if somebody uh, had a bunch of crawlers that he'd pick up in their driveway last week, you would not purchase those? I, I really don't. A lot of times they're a little weaker. Um, when, they, when they get them up in uh, Canada, it's a commercial operation. They're hardly ever touched by hands. Our, our hands okay. are not good on any bait. All bait has a protective slime. And our, uh, we have bad stuff on our hands for it. Okay. So when they bring them up commercially, then they also feed them. They plump them up. And they come in just wow. big, fat just crawlers. Wow, they're just big, fat crawlers. Right. Okay. How about uh, uh, just regular worms themselves? I mean, we don't see it anymore. Um, you don't they're available, but the market really isn't there. That uh, I found when I try to stock them, I can't sell them fast enough to keep them fresh. So if somebody wants uh, fish sunfish, uh, you can still fish those with crawlers, of course. We sort out crawler. the small crawlers. We sell a large and a small. Oh, okay. And the large is what, you know, when I tell the kids that are sorting, it's picture what you want to use for a walleye. You know, you want a nice long crawler, sure. and anything below that, then you Pan bust fish. them up into chunks and use them for pan, pan fish, fish. Or, ba or bass or something like right. that. Okay, good. Well, uh, here we are now. We kind of explained the origin of these uh, critters that you're selling there. Uh, let's let's start out with uh, the, the season. The season just opened in Minnesota here. Yes. And uh, you've been busy. 
Very busy, yeah. <laughs> Busiest time of the year? Uh, yeah, from, from opener through the end of Memorial is probably 20% uh, of the year. Really? Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you got a month there that's uh, pretty, pretty wild. Huh? This or is three it. weeks, actually. Two weeks. Yeah, it's two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then you get busy uh, again uh, in the uh, when the ice goes in too, don't you? I mean, yes, I, there's a good uh, rush the, then too. The, the sucker minnows and, and the different types of baits they use for winter fishing. And right, so on. right. Okay. A lot of it's similar baits. It's just uh, different yeah. uh, people. You yeah, know? Uh, you see different right. People. Yeah, yeah. But you see them over and over again too. Right, right. Yeah. And you get the same customers back uh, through there uh, from out of state. Seem to stop every year. Do you get to know oh, those people we, a little we bit? Do. Yes, I, 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 I've watched kids grow up now. In really? 16 years, I can yeah. remember them coming in, in in their strollers, and now they're coming in <laughs> driving in, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and and you get to know a lot of people, yeah. a lot of names, and, and they're all always happy to see you. You know, yeah. we're the first people they see when they get here. Well, they're so excited to be coming up here anyway, and then right. the bait store. And there's a certain amount of aura in a bait store. And you walk in, it's the odor. It's yeah, the smells. Without question. You know, they've been uh, how many days without that? How many months? And right. they, they smell that. Things. Uh, that's a good thing. You're right. You, you know, see a lot of ladies kind of, oh, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. pinch their nose. Yeah. But the guys all smile. Oh man, that's great. Yeah, it's like a perfume, you know, outdoor it perfume. Yeah. It is. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, this season. And uh, if I if I was going walleye fishing, uh, I, I, I fish walleye myself personally, but I, I'm also a northern panfish guy, um, mostly. <laughs> but walleyes, that's the big thing here. That is. And in the big basin lakes that you're talking about, Leech Lake and, and, and Round and Bowstring and uh, the whole thing, uh, what, what are they going to use? What, what do you sell the most? Right now it's jig and minnow. Um, a jig and a minnow. And, and that sounds simple, but, uh, you know, I brought a little bag of jigs. Well, let's take a look. And uh, just, uh, there isn't anything in here basically the same, you know, and these are different options available nowadays. <laughs> Going from people, they actually have designed a jig for okay. our shiners, okay, that is called a shiner jig, and this one here is made locally by Tim Hirschback. Um, the really long shaft lets you double hook the minnow and get the hook farther back in the minnow. A lot of times, these silver shiners are a little long. The fish have a tendency to grab half of them, and you come up with either the head or a scun minnow. We call it. The skin will be peeled right off because yeah. they didn't get the hook in their mouth. Now that seems like a large hook for a walleye. Yeah, it, it, it really does, but when you compare it to the bait, when you hook it onto the minnow, then all that disappears. Okay. You know, the hook okay, is Okay, so you got to kind of minnow. adapt your size of your hook to, uh, to your, uh, your bait then. Exactly, and, okay. and, and there's a really, you go from, let's say, this being the most aggressive to this being the least aggressive. And this, again, is made by a local Jeff Sundin over in Deer River. Okay, now least aggressive, you're talking about the fish. The fish. And the fact that they're, like, you see a non-aggressive fish, it's a cold day, or whatever conditions right. cause that, the fish aren't biting real aggressively. Exactly. And so you need a shorter shank hook, is that yep, what you're saying? you can bury this, and, and, and you're getting rid of, you know, there's a little color for attraction, but it's really more just to get the minnow to the bottom. What about color? <laughs> what about color? Do we there's have another show? show for yeah, that? there's a show. You know, I am not a big color guy. Uh, okay. I start with, and, and this is one of my favorite colors, but I have seen it already this year, where the guy with a different color was getting way more bites. Yeah, than what I is that? I, I, I don't know. It has it'll to, there's something there. It'll change the next day. Yeah, maybe science hasn't caught up with that yet. You know, and, and I, I always think we overthink that. Oh, yeah. Just well, try different stuff. But then you're always somebody that catches ten times as many. You think, well, now maybe we're not overthinking exactly, this. Yeah, so, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. The color. You know, everybody. A lot of people say, well, any color is fine as long as you got green. In your, yeah. <laughs> right. 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 And okay. there's a and there's yeah. truth to that. Yellow, yeah. green. <laughs> That's yeah, walleye. Yeah. I mean, you can see what do I bring. Yeah, you know, there that's you go. it. Okay, interesting about those hooks. Okay. Uh, and, no. and what I wanted to show, too, yes. was uh, with how to hook these things. That's okay. Now, we're working on hooking shiners. Yes. Silver? Silver shiner, spot tails. Spot, okay, let's take a look at one. You've got some spot, and then maybe you can hook one for us to show how to do that. Good old spot tail, huh? This and this is, is your local shiner. In most of your local lakes here. The, there's hardly clear? a lake around here that doesn't, doesn't have, have some kind of shiner. Really? The spot tails are, are a little less spread out than, uh, let, let's say, the common shiner. The common shiner, like on when I grew up, we had a cabin on uh, on uh, Sugar Lake, Sissabacqua Sugar. Yes. Full of shiners, boiling with shiners, but those are common shiners. You can't haul them, you can't trap them. They die, they turn over in a day. These guys are tough. This time of year is when they're coming in. Where do they come from? This this one came out of Red Lake. Red Lake, okay. 
Just in Red Lake, you've got Red up. Lake, Mille Lacs, and Winnie are the big producers of Silver Shiners. Pretty much produce for the whole state. Yeah, they're beautiful. And, yeah. and this little black spot on the tail is why they're called a, a spot tail. It's the only okay. shiner with that. And do they get all sizes, or is that mainly the? This is this is an adult. Um, they do get big, like the Mille Lacs ones. I'm listening to guys griping the bait store every day because my shiners are so big. If I have the Mille Lacs ones, because they are a, just a bigger minnow. Okay. And that's why these hooks keep getting longer and stinger hooks and all these different things, you know. And you think walleye, you always, I always think smaller bait might be better, but that's not necessarily true, is it's, it? It's this time of year when they're yeah, eating they're, these guys. I they're, mean, they're I, right I, after. I was cleaning fish last night and there was a pile of minnows on that cleaning tail from their stomachs. I mean, just all sizes, thick. I suppose, thick. And yep. shiners. All shiners. Yeah, all shiners. All shiners. <laughs> a lot of them had holes in their heads from being <laughs> stolen off the guy's jig. <laughs> <laughs> I like to look at that. <laughs> well, let's put a hole in this one, Seth, right. see what the... So, the most basic way, and, and I'll use a short chain hook again, this is Jeff Sundin's hook, is you go right in the mouth, and you want to come out as square as you can in the behind the brain skull. You'll feel that hard spot, and you want it nice and wow. straight on there. That middle it, isn't going to twist on there, is it? It's, it's, right. This will especially be a, with motion, it's going to stay right, right, right there. Right, and this will stay nice and straight, and you don't get as much line twist. Now, when a walleye comes in and attacks a minnow like that, does it normally go for the head first? You know, I, I've I, actually seen film of it where they're hitting jigs, and no, a lot of them will suck in from behind. They okay, displace so, water. They suck in. Okay, so that's the giving line thing when you right. feel it. Okay. Right. Because they'll, they'll kind of grab it a few times. You feel that tap. Exactly. Okay. And then they've already got it. They're just shaking they're, their they're head on you now. Okay. <laughs> you know, people <laughs> imagine the fish is nibbling. He's not. He's got it. Okay, so that's interesting. So you just right through the head and... Uh, and that, nice that's and square. And try to bury it in there as far as you can. Yeah. And again, this is a finesse way of fishing. And you're not going to lose that on a... On a on casting that much either, are you? No, as, if, if as you long as you get it in or behind the scope. Yeah, plate. that's going to hold it a little farther. Right. Your mineral delays is going to take off. Not right. Not a lot. Okay. Now, when we're talking long shanks, and like I say, this is a super long shank made locally because of this problem. Totally different method. You are, you're killing the mineral with this method. And uh, that, that a lot of people have problems with that, but you're putting life back in when you fish. You're jigging okay. it, you're making it swim. Totally different style now. You go in the mouth and out the gill plate, bring that back and twist it up into the minnow and get that hook as far back as you can and you'll get a few more fish to hang on because that hook's Oh, okay, so back. you have it coming, you have the barb and everything coming out the back. Right, like and this is, a pretty, this is a good weedless way too. There's a, a time here when the weeds start sure. coming up and sure. you're constantly getting grass. Yeah, because this is what's going to be on the bottom, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly. And when you're fishing this way, this is a lot more aggressive way of fishing. This is a lot more action, a lot more snap. But this is line twisting. This, uh, when I have guys come in and say, I want a new reel because my line's too twisted all the time, I can almost guarantee them it's the way you're hooking your minnow. Really? Yes. And I, I do this, I, I, this is a last resort for me because I don't like dealing with the line twist. Okay. But sometimes you have to. Sometimes they're grabbing uh, just to the head. That's but, as far as yeah. they'll grab it. Okay. And this way you get that hook sure, in. Sure, sure. Does it help to, every time you, you cast out and bring in, is to hold that jig up a little bit and let it let the twist come out of it? That's something, I mean, you bet. I see a lot of people not doing that, and I'm wondering, it just makes sense, doesn't it, to let that 15 to 25 revolutions come out of that. It's that I'm much sure less, that, but you still yeah. have it all the way back. You still got it all the way back, but it's going to help a little right. bit. Right, and when we're fishing like that, and especially like when you're guiding, you've got three, three four rods going in the boat. At the end of the day, you cut the line, Everyone let their line out, drag it behind the boat, oh. reel in, retie the jigs, and you're starting with untwisted line. Will the line untwist with no weight on it? That's the only way it will. You just let it all out and let the weight of the line itself pull it out, and then reel it back in, and all the twist will come right out of it. Poundage of weight, a poundage of line. What, what are we this looking This time of year, six pounds probably the most Perfect. standard. A lot of guys will use eight when you're fishing these lakes that are infested with the Little Northerns, just to help on cutoffs. Okay. And there's a lot of guys fish with four pound. And again, when you're using that little jig and it's real cold front conditions, like we've had this whole season, it slows pound, down the action and you bet. for the slow fish. And and yeah. for and you know, a line weight will affect the motion of the bait. So the lighter, sure. the more natural. Sure. The heavier, the less natural. Of now we're not talking northerns here. We're talking walleyes. Finicky you know, walleyes. Finicky walleyes. Yeah. And uh, panfish too. Right. You know, right. Like that. Okay. Well, you've got some other jigs here. Did you want to? Yeah. Kind of go through a few of those. Yes, or? we've got. Uh, and then we'll get into some of the other bait. Another jig. Uh, uh, Lindy makes this jig. It's called the Max Cap. I picked this one. It's got a rattle on it. 
and it actually rattles. Again, just one of those things you can throw <laughs> in the arsenal. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't use them a lot. I know guys that won't fish well. Well, there's a lot of things that rattle out there. I mean, they got a lot of artificial baits. All they all got the rattles in now. What, what have you learned about that? They, they've just studied is sound. That a plus? And they, they've studied sound, and, and bait fish makes sound. It makes a rattling, clicking sound when it's schooled up and moving. Really? So this is what they're trying to do. <laughs> okay, and that's and that's that's a rattler. Right. And that'll and, say on the package what you're buying. And this is probably the most interesting jig concept. concept and I know Tom, this is going to be new to you. This is Lindy's new exchange system. You can tie this on and you can change size or color just by popping a new head on. So if you were to, if you feel like the guy Unreal. with the yellow is catching more than you, you can just pop it off and put on a new color. Now, show that slow again to the camera here. Just sure. uh, hold it up. So they, when they're new, they stick they sometimes. They stick, okay. Yeah. Now so, you've got, okay. Now, what is this device here? Is that that's a piece of plastic? It's just plastic, and it's and it, attached right to the shank, up by the eye. And you okay. can go from a sixteenth to a three eighth. And sixteens again get used a lot up here when the fish are biting real slow or light, or if you're going to go real shallow to real deep. When the wind kicks up. You want to go heavier. All you have to do is pop that on and off. But you still got the same size hook. Hook. So uh, a sixteenth with that size hook is that effective? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Really? We use a lot of them. Again, that you know, here's a, another one of my favorites. This is the the Lindy original Lindy Max Gap in a sixteenth ounce. It's basically the same jig. I'll be darned. Look at that. And yeah. uh, the sixteenth heads are just tiny. How long has these been around? These are brand new this year. This one here has been around. This this was the first commercially made walleye 16th ounce hook. Again, Jeff Sundin from Deer River, local guide, has been making them forever. We realized the need for it. Finally, the big markets have caught up to it. Wow. So a lot of this technology, a lot of what goes on, a lot of the advancements in fishing happen in these three, four counties around us. Yes. I mean, yeah, you've got Northland Tackle over Bemidji, Lindy down in Brainerd. Yeah. Well, the resources here. The resources here and the fishermen. And there's always, you know, you, you, nobody's ever satisfied with fishing. Right. They always have to try something. Well, that's part of fishing. It is. You know. I so. mean, that, that's, a, you're sitting around not catching fish, your mind's going. You yeah. know, how can yeah. I improve <laughs> this? <you know? laughs> that doesn't happen too often. <laughs> right. <laughs> you hope not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, you've got all those different jigs there. Yeah, I this see, is uh, one other style. No, boy, I see a lot of those used. Yes. And that is. Uh, what, is there a special name for stand that? Stand-up. Stand-up stand up jig. jigs. Yep. Um, well, I can see that as a bottom jig, right? Yeah. Right. In in the dip again, this is another what I think a cold water finesse sandy tactic. bottom. Yes, and that minnow then is actually sticking up higher. You know, any other jig, the minnow's laying on bottom. This one here, when it's working right, that minnow's actually up. And a little bit of action with your rod tip is going to move that bait a little right. bit, isn't it? And, uh, and, and when fish go into a school of bait, the bait will naturally go to the bottom yeah. and try to hide. And this makes it look like a natural action. Can you can you lay a jig and a minnow on the bottom without any action? Will you still get The other day on bolstering, we up? pretty much had to. Uh, they, oh. they just, the cold front came and the fish were just turned off. So you off. have a jig and a minnow, is that minnow alive? Not, not normally. Well, you well if you hook them, yeah, if you hook them in the lips, and, and again, yeah, that's, that, that's the other way to hook them in. Uh, you can hook them right through the lips and not even, uh, not do any damage to the minnow. Now, this is a golden shiner. That's a golden shiner. Hold right. that up so people can see the difference. And, and the difference, there's a lot of difference in shape alone. They have a higher back, they're rounder, and of course, they are gold. Now, we do see some of these that be almost a blue phase, a silver phase, but this is the most common. This is a Minnesota minnow. Are there one that's a livelier or lasts longer than the other, the silver or the golden? Goldies are better in warm water. Better in warm water? Yes. And are they as effective as the silver shiner? Abs absolutely. Um, again, now if you're on Winnie and the shiners are in spawn and the walleyes are in there, no, you want that silver shiner. But if you were to go to Pacagama today, a shiny minnow is a shiny minnow on Pacagama. Okay. And uh, they're eating smelt out there, so you're trying to imitate anything, you know. But see, um, I, th I like to, with these... Uh, stand-ups, hook them right in the lips like that. You're not going to kill them. And when you're dragging that, and this is a drag that, presentation. That minnow is working all the time. Right, sure. his tail's going, because he's trying to get off the hook. Sure, sure. And so they'll see that action, and that should, uh, yeah, that, it always attracts fish. I mean, you no bet. matter where you are, you can see that in a fish shelter. You bet. You know, so, yeah, okay. So you 
You got any other jigs there that are a little different? Well, one of the old, one of the old, uh, the first short chain jig, and, and everyone, I think everyone that walleye fishes in northern Minnesota knows what a fireball is. They're getting fancier colors. That's why I picked this one. Those are effective. I've used those. Uh, and, and you're back to, this is the finesse, you know, this is the finesse way of fishing. The fireball and scene. It actually has a second eye on it here, which is made for a stinger hook. It's a little treble hook on a little piece of monofilament. You clip it on just to get that another hook back in the tail. And that's legal because that's considered a lure. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And then um, the only other jig that I brought that's a different would be floaters. Yeah. And now we're getting more into rigging or Lindy rigging, which we'll cover later, but they do make jig heads that float. This is the old soft body Phelps floater. Don Phelps from Bemidji, Minnesota invented those. And regular old foam floater. I brought these because there's a lot of bank fishermen around here that fish the Mississippi. We sell oodles of these this time of year. They this way, when they're in the river, they put on a heavy sinker, and this keeps it from being on bottom. Okay. And, and you know, in the current, depending on how long your leader is, you can have this thing two inches to maybe eight inches off bottom. A slide sinker? Yeah, a slip sinker and a swivel, right. The, the old See, standard Lindy rig. You almost got to have the slip sinker, right? I mean, right. All the time, because right. that stops the... <clears throat> Uh, fish from feeling that weight. I mean, you can pull it right through. Right, through. Yeah. right. and okay. at the same token, when you reel in, then, then your swivel brings that right. sinker in. Right. So. Okay, so how long of a leader? Two to five feet. Two to five you feet? You know, a lot of times in the in the summer when we're rigging, like on Winnie, we'll have six, eight, ten foot leaders um, just to allow your leech to swim better or you blow up your night crawler. When you graph a spot on your electronics, you'll see sometimes they're this high up bottom. And you've got to figure out how to get that bait to them. And longer snell's one of the right ways. And that thing will float up. Right. Okay. And especially when you slow down or stop, sure. your bait comes up, up and then yeah. you move a little bit and your bait will come up. So you're always fishing, even if you're stopped. Exactly. The thing is working up, exactly. up above the bottom. Yep. Okay. Um, we have leeches. Uh, is Can you rig a leech for us on a jig? I mean, do, do you, people use jigs and leeches? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I actually grabbed a couple different sizes because there's a, a reason, you know, we don't carry jumbos because one guy has to have a jumbo and the next guy wants a large. There's different um, wow, those are big. techniques of, of using them. This would be a jumbo. Yes. I wouldn't jig a jumbo. Um, it's kind of a waste of bait. Uh, you don't need that big of a leech on a jig in general. I know a lot of guys that do bobber fish with a jumbo, but I wouldn't. I, a medium or a large is good enough. But when you're plane rigging and you want him to swim, you want the biggest, strongest leech you can. And it's more about the swimming than it is the size of, of the leech. Plain rigging, I mean just a hook. Just a hook, or a bead, what? or a colored hook. Okay, like a Lindy rig of some exactly. sort. Exactly. Smaller yeah. little hook. Right. Okay. And you hook, and you hook them. Now I'll do it like on a jig, and again, this is another jig made by Jeff Sunday, not Deer River. When I'm jigging leeches, this is the only jig I'll use. These things just work on them. You've got uh, the sucker on the one end. Leeches don't want anything to do with you. They're not blood suckers. They're more vegetarian. That's kind of his hand. He'll grab you with it, but he can't do anything. He's not biting you. Mm -hmm. But that's Arms. where you want to stick the hook. Right through the uh, right, sucker itself? Right through the sucker. Okay. And feed it up onto the jig a little bit and come out again nice and square. Oh, and like the middle. Yeah. Something like the middle. Like using that as a head of the, okay. And see how he starts acting once you're, you've hooked him. And when you get him in the water, he'll just want to take off. Boy, yeah, that, I, those are so effective at certain times of the year, aren't they? Anytime, no. I, anytime people, from now on. People already using them. You know, and I, I, I got to I talk about learning every day. I asked a guy the other day in this cold water, doesn't that leech just ball up on you? Now we're in the middle of May now. So, right. Yeah. And he says, I just keep them in colder water. So oh. when you, they hit that water, they think it's warm. They're in Hawaii. Yeah, they're in Hawaii. Yeah, they're swimming. Yeah. But that's a good hint for all summer. You always want your bait colder than the water. Because then when it hits that water, it's warm and it gets active. Okay, that's another tip, huh? And you keep it cold by? Ice in the cooler. Ice in the cooler. Yeah. Okay, so leeches are effective right through the whole summer and into the fall. Uh, now there's a certain time you can't get leeches. When does that end? Normally they stop trapping in August, but there's enough in the tanks to keep uh, okay. keep them going well into September. Okay, and there's so guys that want them right up to ice out. Or oh, ice up, I mean. Okay, so fall fishing, I would su I would suppose that the majority of the bait is is minnows. It is, but but like I say, but I can they, name a couple of locals here that would would and are just as effective with with the leeches. It's all they'll use. Okay, yep. and the bigger the better. 
Yeah, okay. Um, so we've, we've talked about how to hook a leach and a minnow. Um, different types of minnows, we haven't gone through that. Right, yet. right. So let, why don't we hit that right all now? Right. Start, start with probably you know, the most When you common. walk into your bait store, you've got all these signs up and you've got little different cubicles and um, a lot of different kinds of minnows. And, and this I is, think folks want to know what they're for. Right. And this is a common white sucker, the same thing you were out chasing in the creeks the other day. Sure. Kind of hard to hold them to show the head, but we all know why it's called a sucker. They've got their mouth on the bottom. It's like one good northern bait. Exactly. Okay. And you know, they, they, these are sold, this is a, what's, what's called a light northern, which is the size below a de decoy. And they're sold all the way down to, you know, two and a half inches called light pike. Light pike. So the light, the pike is smaller than the light northern when you have right. that name on those bins. Right. right. So there, there is actually a, uh, a naming system here on these things. Right. And it, it's funny because heavy pike are smaller than light northern. Yes. And people get confused with that. <laughs> yeah. But okay. the, you have light pike, heavy pike, light northern. Just remember the northern is a little bit bigger. Exactly. When okay. Now, I, there, there's a, there's a, there you go. <laughs> we knew there's, that was going to There's happen. a lot of different ways. Let that one go. We'll have another one. You got another one in there? You or? bet. Um, well, how do you hook them? For you know, you get into that, and, and there are so many ways from bobber fishing to, again, lindy rigging. And I did actually grab, I wanted to show a lot of people troll for northerns and don't even know that these are available. They actually make a steel lindy rig. Oh, and this okay. is a steel cable mm -hmm. with a hook on it and a spinner, and there's your walking sinker. And you fish them like, a, like you know, I always say like walleyes, but a lot of people don't even fish walleyes, but um, just trolling it and fast enough to keep that spinner turning. And you hook it through the mouth? With this first. one, you would hook in the mouth in when the you're going to okay. move it. When you're bobber fishing, you want to hook them back by the tail and try oh. to keep them at a... Uh, That's at what a I've mouth. seen done and seems to be most effective because when the northern comes in, they usually grab them by the, the center of the, of, of the bait, it seems like. Right. And see, now this will stretch out to be about three feet long. Oh. And, and when you're going to fish... You need a good size weight on the front of that when you're exactly. trolling. Exactly. And, and again, that's going to be your depth. If you're going to be deep, heavier weight, shallow, lighter mm -hmm. weight, gonna want, mm -hmm. if you want to move fast, heavier weight. But all you would do with this one is plain old, hook him right in the mouth like that. And that's, again, so he's swimming and active and doesn't slow him down at all. Okay. Now, now that, if you're that's gonna, for the trolling. Now, if I want to go out and I bobber fish or you can use jigs on these too. A lot of guys do big, heavy jigs. And it just kind of, they kind of throw them out and then just slowly bring them back. Right, and, 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 and again, with nor northerns, it's less important to be near bottom. You've got the bottom 10 feet to deal with with a northern. True. They love to come up and hit. But bobber fishing. Bobber fishing, if under a bobber, now again, you would have a steel just leader on a hook, but no spinner. Right. And all you do there is you, some guys like to hook them behind. I the like dorsal to hook fin them, there. Yeah, I like to hook them up here. And don't try not to pierce okay, hold your back. That up to the camera there. And then when he's in the water, he's at his natural position. He can swim around. Okay. And uh, again, you're not killing him by doing this. Yes. Yeah, he'll last a long time, as long as you don't keep throwing it out. I mean, we, you, you want to resist the temptation to bring the bobber in and throw it back out with that on it because right. you're probably going to lose it. Right. right exactly. And okay. you're, you're just going to damage the bait over time. Okay. Now uh, another common big minnow around here, and these things are just wild. I have a heck of a time holding on. Ooh. This is called a red-tailed chub. Um, real native to our streams and rivers. Extremely hard to trap. The most expensive minnow in Minnesota. Um, what are we looking at there for expense? This thing here, about 12 bucks a dozen, buck a minnow. Um, I was going to say that, but I was, I was, I was going to kid with that, but that's, it's a buck a minnow. No. They had a so. professional walleye tournament on Cass Lake this time of year last year, and uh, they, were getting about up, three, so they were getting about three bucks a minnow. Wow. The well, fish there's, were deep. there's profit and, to be made everywhere, I guess. And the, and the deal with this guy is, and you look at him, he's more of a fish than a minnow, and, and they really are. They're strong. And what's the name of them? Red tail chub. And you can see the faint red in his, in his yes. tail there. And actually, this, this is a, an extreme one. That's about as big as you ever see them. When the guys want to go walleye fishing, when the pros were in uh, Cass Lake last year. And red tail chubs were, were used over and above the shiners? Absolutely. They were rigging them in like 45 feet of water. And rigging, again, means slow, one hook in the mouth. And this minnow can go, can sustain the depth. 
you can okay. drop them and bring them back up and that kind of water. Is there water. a spinner involved with that? Absolutely not. This minnow does everything on his own. And, and right now I'm holding, he's just Let's fighting see. me. Yeah. I can barely okay. hold on to him. I mean, barely hold on to these yeah. minnows. That's they what are, makes them so... So they last a long time too? Yes. Oh boy, they look like a, they almost got look like a small trout. They do, and you'll catch <laughs> these when you're trout fishing streams. This is okay. the minnows guys get. And a they don't of, know what it is. Right, and a okay. lot of times these are caught by trappers hook and line and sold as bait. They really? use a, you know, a number 20 yeah. hook. Yeah, sure. Because they won't. They're so expensive. And they're so hard to trap. There's yeah. really finicky, finicky minnow. But they are effective. They are the top of the line for okay. when you're going to, uh, not jigging. You know, I, I yeah. wouldn't jig a red tail again. Yeah. It's a waste of money. But if you've got a, if you, if money's on the line, that's the minnow. Okay. What other, uh, I guess, species of minnow, you could say? We went through the golden and the golden other. Golden and the silver. The other most popular minnow around here, and again, because they're local and they're in all our lakes, is a rainbow chub. And they're called rainbow chubs because of their beautiful coloring. You'll see some have bright orange on them, some have bright yellow. They'll well, you see those up. a lot in the lakes. You do. Yeah. They seem like they don't last as long, is that? You know, it, again, because they're trapped locally, it's all in the handling. You know, sure. like the, the ones I just got in this morning, he just pulled them out of the pond this morning. They're going to okay. be around forever. So if, if somebody wants to make sure their minnows last, there's two things really the temperature and the oxygen yes the colder the better always and then pumping possibly pumping oxygen in right or at least changing the water a lot changing or leaving the, water. the bucket in the water right and and okay. shiners in particular kill themselves in the water they give off uh, a lot of ammonia so you have to change that's the smell in my bait store come spring my bait store isn't that bad until we get our shiners in <laughs> they, they give off a smell what about fat hits Fat, fat heads, uh, most common minnow out there. Little Crappie club. minnow, right? But yeah, I think I brought some. Yeah, I don't even know if I grabbed okay. any. Okay. Well, uh, the fat head minnow seems to be. Uh, now, is that effect? That's effective on walleyes. Absolutely, and, and, and it's the the old standard. I um, just read an article by the lenders, and they still have it as a third favorite yeah. minnow. You know, just because they've used okay. them so long. And you can go in and get a scoop of those for about the same price you can as a dozen of uh, exactly. uh, shiners. And, and, and they're hardier. You can, you can hardly kill them. I mean, yeah. you almost got to cook them in the sun to kill yeah. them. Okay. You know? Yeah, that's right. So the, 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 And they come in various sizes. Right. I see that's a fathead minnow. This, this actually isn't. This is a different form oh, different. of a dace, a different form of the red tail. Okay. And I, wanna, I, I grabbed a couple different ones because rainbows are kind of an all-encompassing term for a, a group of minnows called the dace. And uh, this is, uh, we call them stone rollers. This is another really good active hardy minnow. And I think a lot of people buy rainbows because they're more active than a regular fat edge. Show. And you can see as I'm holding them, they fight you all the time. Yeah, and uh, boy, that sure looks uh, like a good walleye bait there. They are, yeah. and, and, and it's all, you know, color. I know guys that want to use this guy. No, this we call a leaper, a lemon leaper, or a pinhead. And it's in the rainbow chub family, and it's got more color than any of the rest. But this is as big as they get. And uh, they're always mixed in with your uh, rainbows because you can't really get them out of there. And uh, a lot of people love this one because it's smaller, it's brighter. Crappies? Crappies. And okay. also there's a lot of places around here where they start feeding on baby bullheads. Oh, and okay, these sure. minnows really imitate a baby sure. bullhead well. they got the color and the black back. and. Now there's a lot of panfish fishing coming up here now. Yes, because you know, there's finally, I think we're going to get some warm weather. Here. I, 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 and I, we're only like two weeks behind. I think that. we're finally hitting the best crappie time, and I don't see enough people doing it. And know? so when you get a peop, people coming in for crappie bait, uh, you got different size fatheads that they usually buy for crappie. Three sizes, yes. Three sizes. Uh, do you have any suggestions on what to use at certain times of the year? I, you know, I always use a basic small crappie minnow. Um, the minnow one, I really, we call it a large crappie minnow, but I, I really consider it a perch minnow. Um, people that target perch, the crappie minnow's a little small, fatheads are a little big, so we've always had this market for that middle sized minnow. Um, okay. Some guys like crappie minnow or large crappies for crappies. We saw in Red Lake how big a minnow crappies will eat. Even back when they're 10, 11 inches, you could catch them on shiners. They, they're amazing. With that, They've got a big think they got a, Yeah, it looks doesn't look that big, but they sure can take in a lot of bait. It's amazing they? what they, what I've seen yeah, them things hit. Especially if you get over like that 10 inch uh, area right, uh, with right. crappies. And that should be starting now around here. What about sunfish? Sunfish, in, um, uh, this area is one of the best in the, it, in it the United States for nice sunfish. We don't get as big as a lot of the areas down south, 
but for one pound fish, yeah. this is as good as it gets. So uh, bait for that? You just normally 90% uh, are, are crawlers? or Well, come uh, summer, baby leeches. Um, the yeah. smallest, tiniest little leech. And uh, I'm not even stocking them right now because the demand isn't there yet. But as sure. the water warms up and people start fishing off their docks and pontoon sure. boats, then they want those wow. baby leeches. Okay. That are a night crawler busted into pieces or a wax worm. Yeah. And so. Now, when you call a, a, a crappie minnow, let's go back to those, that, that is a fathead minnow, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Just a smaller version, or yes. different sizes and so on. Yes, they're, they're, they're the babies, they're, they're middle yeah. age and then adults. And when they, when they are brought into your bait store, are they strained already for different sizes? Or do you Not do really, that? we do that ourselves. You do that yourself, you yeah. have a grate that you put yep, through. Yep, yeah. we've got graters and, and the one we use for the small crappie, large crappie is just a quarter inch mesh screen. Okay. So if it can go through a quarter inch mesh screen, it's okay. a small crappie minnow. How many dozen minnows are there in a scoop? <laughs> it depends on the size of the minnow. Well, a person comes in and wants a, some small crappie minnows. And you, am I going to buy a two dozen or am I going to buy a scoop? A scoop yeah, is 80, 90 minnows in our store. Oh, okay. And then wow. when you get so to the fat heads, that's 40, seven, eight, 40 minnows or so. Seven, eight or eight dozen. So you're yeah. better off probably if you're going to be out for a day or trying to keep those minnows overnight or for a week or so, you're better off with a scoop of minnows. Yeah, absolutely. And how, how would you suggest that people keep their minnows at home? You know, the same thing. You know, they, eight, ten bucks, you can buy a little D-cell aerator. And if you've got a lot of minnows, I recommend them. You know, and it, you don't go through, I mean, maybe a set of batteries a week. Oh, yeah. they, they don't use that much uh, no, electricity then? not at all. And, and, um, they, they, they fit, go right in the water? Or they hang over the side of the bucket? They'll or? clip right on the side of the bucket, have a little piece of uh, hose and a little air stone in them. And they just put enough air into that water okay. to keep the minnows alive. And keep them in a cool place, uh, probably a, a, maybe a garage on the floor, uh, cement, something For like sure. That. The coldest you can keep them. The coldest you can uh, keep them. ice? Uh, I don't recommend icing minnows. Be, because I, of the, uh, the shock, shock value? Absolutely. And maybe the type of water you're putting in there? Exactly. Okay. And, 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 you know, if you've got really cold minnows, like now, it's all right to throw some ice in them, but if that yeah. water's warm and you ice it down, you, you risk okay. killing the middle. And they will survive in the warmer water, won't they? They I do. Mean, during they're the coming summer. out of it. I mean, they're living yeah. in it. It's that's, just, that's right. What kills them is our changing their temperatures. Coming into my bait store, now let's say in, in a month the water temperature is 70 degrees. We've got to cool them down to okay. the well water. Okay. You know, at the wholesaler, the truck, to me, and then people take them out and warm them back up again. So everything you do is shortening the lifespan okay. of that minnow. We've only got a few minutes uh, left here, and we haven't touched on artificial bait a lot. Um, you know, I, this is a tough question, but percentage-wise, when somebody walks in, uh, they, they buy as much artificial bait as they do live bait, don't they? I mean, when you come to certain species, when you talk northerns, bass, yeah. For sure, artificial, artificial. rules. Okay. Um, and muskies, they're, they're yeah, right. the king of artificial baits. But um, around here, when it comes to the other species, I'm convinced live bait works better. You know, there's this gulp stuff out there now. They say, oh, yeah. fish is live bait. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. I've tried it side by side. I haven't seen it. If you're going to Canada, where bait is a right. 40 cents a minnow, it's a good idea. The fish aren't as in, in tune and okay. they're easier to catch. Are there any uh, special artificial baits that sell better than others that people are really hooked on? Other, I mean, Rapalas, I'm sure. Yes, uh, of course, the Rapala the, the hard, in the hard baits, but when it comes to soft plastics, that's really been where the cutting edge technology is yes. coming in right now with scent infused baits. Started with Power Bait, Berkeley Power Bait, uh, about 10 years ago, and it's only gotten better. Now, Berkeley's moved on to their gulp. Um, Rapala's come out with what's called the Trigger X set. They're putting pheromones in these things now, and they're wow. they're doing so things. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> well, science. Yeah, 20 years from now, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you just can't imagine. Look what's happened in 16 years. Right? It's it's just it's crazy, just <laughs> and you wonder how did I catch him 16 yeah, yeah, years yeah, ago? Yeah, it, no, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> what happened to the old bamboo pole? And remember right. that old rayon rod we uh, line we had, and the open face old reels, amazing. Uh, and there's reels uh, that are people are buying now that are five six hundred dollars a piece. Absolutely. And uh, it doesn't necessarily make them a better fisherman. Not at all. Not you still have to run the boat. You still have to run the boat. <laughs> and you have to have a little knowledge of what you're doing. Right. And, and yeah. Okay, great. Well, I tell you, you've, you've given us a lot of information here, Ben, and I uh, appreciate that. It's, it's uh, one thing, I, another thing I want to mention uh, to the public here uh, that uh, maybe they don't know this, but uh, it, it's really <clears throat> getting around the community now on this let's go fishing with seniors. We have this pontoon toon boat, it's already paid for. This is our second year in running this Let's Go Fishing. Uh, we already, I think, are booked up already in May for like 60 outings for the seniors, anybody over 55 in the area. And uh, you are providing 
your store and you yourself are providing the bait for our Let's Go Fishing seniors in the area. I'm proud to summer. do it. Yeah, I think it's and a great it's cause. And it's fantastic. All we do is when we need bait, we stop in and you supply us with either the minnows or the whatever we need. It's normally uh, crawlers or leeches. Right. And uh, we're all set up. And boy, we really appreciate that. There's no, a lot of volunteers. Great, great organization. Like it, you say, all the people working on it's the least I could yeah, do. Yeah, well, it, it's great. I mean, you're, uh, you're providing that service. And without that, we'd be in pretty tough shape because we'd have to uh, spend a lot of uh, uh, money that was raised uh, through volunteer help right. on the bait. And that's one thing we don't have to worry about now. So right. really appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure, in. Tom. And uh, maybe we'll have you on again and talk about some other things. We've got so much more to go. That sounds good. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. And thank you for watching Just Outdoors. And remember, stay informed. Just Outdoors is brought to you by the following community supporters. Jervalin Hardware Hank, Deer River. Jervalin Hardware offers a broad selection of paints and sporting goods and a complete line of plumbing and electrical supplies. Jervalin Hardware, 108 Main Avenue, Deer River.